Welcome to a tag video. Did one last week, did one this week. I'm really excited to do this one. This is the Postscript book tag. And I was tagged by Alex over at Tall Guy Reads. I'm gonna link his video and channel below so you can see his answers to these prompts. This is a really fun kind of end of the year tag that kind of lets you think about the year and reminisce about some of the things that you read and just talk about them in a clever way. So here are my answers to the postscript book tag. So the first question has kind of two answers. It says, what's the longest book you read this year and the book that took you the longest to finish? Two answers because this is two different books for me. So the longest book I read this year was Shogun by James Clavell, and it was 1,299 pages, and it was worth every moment of it. It is one of the best books of the year that I have read. It is an epic work of historical fiction, has to do with cross-cultural learning and cross-cultural clashes between East and West as we experience this book through the eyes of a European who's shipwrecked on the coast of Japan in the year of 1600, the year of the samurai. And this is a fantastic book. So it was my longest book, but I actually read it in six days because it was so good. The book that took me the longest to finish was also a long book. It was about 1,200 pages, and that was 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. This took me 14 days to finish, and it's a pretty big book. Uh, but I loved it just as, maybe not as much as Shogun, but when I did my video halfway through the year of my top five books so far, it was on that list. So it's definitely a top five or top ten book of the year for me. Murakami isn't for everyone, and I wouldn't recommend this as anybody's first venture into Murakami's works, but I did love 1Q84, even though it did take me 14 full days to finish it. All right, number two, a book I read this year that was outside my comfort zone. That would have to be a collection I read called The Art of War and Other Classics of Eastern Philosophy. I read a lot of philosophy in my 20s, but I found in reading this that because it's been a while, it just took me a while to really focus on the text as much as I think you need to when you read works of philosophy. Additionally, I think I read this work a little too fast. I think this should have been one where I read it very spread out over a long period of time rather than reading it in kind of short bursts and reading it a lot faster. So it was a bit of a challenge for me. When I did read the Tao Te Ching the first time around when I was in my 20s, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I didn't enjoy it as much this time around. And I think that's just because I'm just it was just a little out of my comfort zone. So I'll make an effort to try to continue to push myself out of that comfort zone a little bit more in the coming year because I think it's just good for me to do so. But I did enjoy The Art of War quite a bit. That was definitely the highlight of that collection for me. Number three, how many books did you reread? I had trouble counting. It was, it's about 20. And the reason I had trouble counting, I had some book series that I reread. I reread um, Mistborn Era 2 by Brandon Sanderson. I reread The Chronicles of Pride Aim by Lloyd Alexander. I reread the 10 books that comprise the Ender Court Quartet and the Ender Shadow series. And there were a few standalones in there that I reread as well. So I reread about 20 books, which is a lot more than I normally do. But I do love to reread. As I mentioned, if you saw my tag video, my Thanksgiving book tag, there was a prompt there about rereading. And the one point I made with that is I think any great work is better on a reread. So I do like to reread and I do have some fun rereads planned for next year. Okay, um, oh, the next question talks about rereads. My favorite reread of the year. And I'm just going to say stay tuned because at the end of December, I'm going to upload my video of the second annual Red Fury Book Awards. I'm really excited to do that. It's a way that I wrap up my year in an awards ceremony style rather than just giving you a top 10 list or something like that. So I'll talk about my book of the year, my book series of the year, my author of the year, my new author of the year, and my favorite reread of the year, as well as some other categories. So stay tuned for that. That'll probably be posted at the very end of December, and that will answer that question for you about my favorite reread this year. All right, number five, a book you read for the first time that you look forward to rereading. So a lot of rereading in these questions. That would be The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. 
I can't wait to reread those 16 books. It's one of the best book series I've ever read. It's a new favorite author, maybe number one on the list. I'm not sure at this point, but she's in the conversation. But I cannot wait to reread The Realm of the Elderlings, especially going in, knowing where the plot's going, that I can really focus in on so much more. The world, the characters, the little beats that happen between characters. I can't wait to experience that journey again. It probably won't start in 2023, but I bet it's going to be pretty soon after that because I absolutely loved my journey through the Realm of the Elderlings. I can't wait to do it again. Favorite single short story or novella that I read this year? I actually read a lot of short stories this year. I think I read five or six collections of short stories in a lot of different genres. The one that popped into my mind right away was from Stephen King and his collection, If It Bleeds. There's a short story in there called Mr. Harrigan's Phone. And it's a short story, so I'm not going to tell you anything about it, but go read it. It was fantastic from beginning to end. Just one of those little gems that, that King had in that collection. All right, number seven, Mass Appeal, a book I liked and would recommend to a wide variety of readers. For that, I would say To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. It is a classic that you should read, but it's not a difficult to read classic. It's also not very long. It's about 300 pages, maybe a little bit less. So it's not a big, long chunker of a classic, but it is such a powerful book. It really blew me away. I was expecting to like it because I did like it when I read it in high school, but I was not expecting it to become one of my favorite classics of all time. And it certainly is. So my mass appeal choice for all of you is go read To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Next question, specialized appeal. A book I liked, but would be hesitant to recommend to just anyone. I would say 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. Murakami is a very polarizing author. Some people are like me that just love his work, and then some people just don't like him at all. And I kind of understand he's kind of a niche author. He's got a very, very unique voice. And if you don't connect with that voice like I do, you're not going to like him as an author. And you're definitely not going to like him as an author when the book is 1,200 pages long. <laughs> so 1Q84 would be my recommendation. If you're a fan of Murakami, definitely read it. If you're not, maybe figure out if you like Murakami first before you read this one. So if you want a good entry point to Murakami's style of magical surrealism is what I call it, Pick up Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World. That's a very good one to kind of tow the waters. It's only about 300 pages, and it might give you a good idea of whether Murakami might be an author for you or not. All right, number nine, reflect on my year as a bookish content creator. Goals met, good, bad memories, favorite videos you made, etc., etc. This year has been truly fantastic. I've had the channel almost two years now, but my first year, it took me a year to get about 200 subscribers. And as I'm filming this, I've gotten over 1,500 for the year for the channel, which is about 1,300 that I've gained in the last 12 months, which blows my mind. It's so gratifying that people like the channel and they like to hear me talk about books. My favorite thing about all of this is the comments section. I love when I get book recommendations from you. I love when you like what I'm doing. I love when we have conversations about books. Absolutely my favorite thing. The other thing that I've liked quite a bit this year is I've been starting to do different collaborations, you know, being on other people's channels, having people on my channel, and just talking about books. That's really the number one motivation for all of this is just want to have dialogue about literature. And I just love the fact that so many people enjoy these conversations from both the content creator side and the viewer side, of which I'm both. I mean, I've subscribed over 100 booktubers probably, and I love when I see the conversations between them. So those are probably my most fun videos to shoot. As far as videos by myself that I shoot, any video where I can talk about a lot of books and give a lot of recommendations. Like my Hidden Gems video was a lot of fun. The videos I did where I gave my all genre book recommendations, those were a lot of fun. I enjoy my monthly wrap ups especially when it's a good month, when I have books that I can rave about. So those are the things I enjoy most. I didn't really set any goals at the beginning of the year, but 
had I set some goals, I'm sure that I would have met or exceeded all of those. So um, thank you all for being here. But that was the last prompt here is reflect on my year as a bookish content creator. It's been a fantastic year. And the last one, tag some fellow bush bookish, con bushish, bushish, tag some fellow bookish content creators. Uh, I like how Alex chose his. He chose the three J's, Josh and Joanna and Jordan. So I'm going to pick the three Matts. I don't know if any of them actually do book tag videos, but I'm going to tag them anyway. So Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews and Matt from Matt on Books and Matt from Hobbit Hole Books. So I'm going to tag the three Matts. Uh, I'd love to see you do this tag and reflect upon your years as well. I'd love to see your answers to these prompts. And if you're a content creator and you want to make this tag video, just tag me. I'd love to see what you come up with this. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter and Goodreads. I'd love to interact with you there. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.